Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought for this next multi-part lesson we would take a look at exporting, some advanced exporting from HD to SD, because this is a process that most people think needs to be done in an external program, making that conversion from HD to SD. But it really doesn't. All of the work can be done right from within Media Composer. So when you export, the file is basically ready to send to a client or ready to be sent to a station to be put on the air. OK, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. OK, so let's Alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. I'm just going to open my sequences bin because obviously before we actually export a clip, we're going to need a sequence to export. So what we're going to do here is just open my motocross footage here. We'll just grab some clips at random. We'll just drop them into a timeline. Now I'm not going to need audio for this, so I'm just going to delete those audio tracks. And we'll just grab a couple more clips here. Sure, why not that one? Just make sure I have my video one layer selected. Hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and we'll just select another one here. I think that's way too long. So let's just shorten that up. Okay, perfect. And what I'm also going to do here, just for kicks, is I'm not only going to put transitions between each one of these uh, cuts here. We're going to go with a 12 frame dissolve here. We're going to apply to all transitions into out. I'll just simply say add. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a new video layer by pressing Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And let's add a title in here because I want to show you a great technique that you can use when you're going to be exporting your footage. Now this is going to come into play in both lessons, but more sort of more relevant in this lesson here. And let's create a title and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to come up to Clip. Let's create a new title. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to create it with just the standard title tool here. We'll just type in Moto Crossing. And of course, we all know my favorite font by now, Impact. And let's add a drop shadow value of 2. There we go. And we're going to soften this up by pressing Control, Shift, and H on Windows, Command, Shift, and H on the Mac. Sure, we'll give it a value of 4. We'll just say Apply. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it down here in the lower left-hand corner. Now, something that I want to talk about right off the bat that's very important, uh, especially with working with titles, is that you're going to notice that inside of the title tool, I have my safe grid here. Now, for some reason, your safe grid is not coming up. You can simply navigate up to object, and you're going to see it right here, safe title area global grid. If I turn that off, it's going to disappear, and then people are going to be putting their titles over here. They'll be putting them up here. They'll be putting them all over the place. Now, this guide is exceptionally important because this is the guide that stations go by when judging if your text sits inside of title safe. Because what happens is, is that if you have it sitting over here, this outside marker is actually picture safe. So right now, chances are people at home are not going to be able to see what's going on with this title. It's going to get cut right off. So what I normally suggest to people is to have it sitting right about there. Now, if you need to cheat it a little bit, you know, because maybe you got text going all the way across the bottom of the screen, you can cheat title safe a little bit. Don't be cheating it too much, though, because remember, the older the people's TVs are, the more stretch you're going to get. And like I said, this text might get cropped off. So what I'm going to do is just play it a little safe here. We'll just make sure we're all the way within uh, title safe, safely within title safe for that matter. I'm going to navigate up to file. I'm going to simply say save title as. We'll call this Moto Crossing. Uh, we'll stick it in sequences. Why not? I'm simply going to say save. And let's just close the title tool because there is my title. And let's take this title, drop it into my timeline. Now what most people think that they're going to do at this point is they're going to export this because they're going to use a third party application to then take this and convert it to standard def. The only problem with doing that is that once you get into this third party application, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you're going to run into trouble real quick. But there's a way that you can do it inside a Media Composer and Symphony that's quick, it's going to save you a ton of time, and it's going to guarantee that your export is correct. Now we're going to need to set up our export settings, but I'm going to show you how we're going to do that so that every time you export standard def, you're going to be all set to go. Okay, now the first thing I need to do to do this is create a new video layer. So again, I'm going to press Control and Y in Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new blank track. Now I'm not going to put anything onto this track just yet. What we're going to do now is we're going to navigate up to Format. And you're going to see right now the format I'm working in is, appropriately enough, 720p, 23976, because that's what my HD footage is. 
But what I want to do is I want to go to standard F. I want to go to 720, or pardon me, I want to go to uh, 30 or 23.976 P NTSC. So what this is basically going to do is, once I switch the aspect ratio here to be 4 by 3, is that this is going to create a 4 by 3 frame. And you see what happens is, is that my footage inside this frame has now been stretched to fill the entire frame. But we know that that's not the proper aspect ratio of my footage. My footage is 16 by 9, so this should be letterboxed. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, well, we'll probably do that when we export it, right? Nope, we're not going to do that when we export it. We're going to do it right now as an effect. So what we're going to do, I'm going to press Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac to call up the effects palette. Let's navigate all the way down to the bottom here. And we're looking for reformat. I'm going to select reformat. And what I'm going to do is select, simply enough, a 16 by 9 letterbox. I'm going to take that. I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to drop it on top of my footage. And of course, nothing's happened. Well, why has nothing happened? Well, it's because I'm just not monitoring that track. With applying the effect to the topmost channel, that's going to trickle down to everything that's down below it. And you'll see now what we've got is the proper 16 by 9 aspect ratio letterboxed with our footage. But now, of course, we've run into an interesting situation. Now, you'll remember when I created this in HD, motocrossing was sitting on the edge of HD title save. But we're not in HD anymore. We're in standard F. And what's going to happen is, is that if I call up my grid, now, I have actually added this grid shortcut here to the top of my timeline, just like such. Now, if you don't have your grid mapped anywhere on your uh, composer window or down here on the timeline, it's very easy to do. What you can do is just navigate up to Tools, Come on down here to Command Palette, and you're going to find it inside of Effects right over here, Grid. You can take it, drag it down here, drop it on. Just remember, you're going to want to have a button-to-button -button reassignment selected to make sure that grid appears where you want it to in your Composer or your Timeline. Now, like I said before, here's the issue. You'll remember, like I said, when I created this title initially, it was sitting on the edge of HD Title Safe. Well, because we're in Standard Def now, this is actually a little bit too high. And if this was just a standard clip that had been merged down, so I only had one layer, there'd be nothing that I could do to adjust this. But because I've done things in the technique that I've shown you, we can actually adjust this after the fact. Like I said, if we would exported this for, as HD and done this through a program like Squeeze, we wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to show you. What I'm going to do is step into Effects Mode by pressing Shift and Y on the keyboard. Now, Shift and Y, again, my shortcut for Effects Mode. If you don't have Effects Mode mapped, you can always find it right here or right here. And all I'm going to do now is navigate up here to the vertical position, and I'm going to adjust the vertical position to sit it right down here at the bottom of the image, not outside into the letterbox, but just down there at the bottom like such. That's a little bit too much there. Let's see here. Maybe we can put it even just at an even, maybe 95. That's looking perfect right there. So you see the flexibility you have working this way. You can get in, you can make adjustments like that, that like I said, in most cases, you wouldn't be able to make. Okay, so let's export this clip to the desktop, you know, to hypothetically, you know, upload it on an FTP to a station, you know, if this was a commercial we were working on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to select everything. What we're going to do now is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say export. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up our export settings once for standard def and then we won't need to adjust them again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into options. We're going to make sure that we have QuickTime Movie selected. What we're going to do is we're not going to use same as source because right now the codec that I'm using is an HD codec. So if I attempt to export same as source, Media Composer or Symphony is going to give me an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a custom export. Now before we get into the format options, let's just set everything up inside of this first export window here. The first thing we're obviously going to want to do is export as 720 by 486 601 non-square pixels. So I'm going to select that. That's the uh, standard D1 frame size. Now next, color levels. Because I imported these clips as RGB, I'm just going to export them as RGB. Now obviously, depending on how your footage has been brought in, you're going to want to choose RGB or 601709. Remember, it depends on how you've acquired your footage. Okay? I'm just going to leave mine as RGB, and we're going to leave it as the native dimension, 720 by 486. Now in this case, I have video and audio selected, but because I don't have any audio, I'll just select video. Obviously, if you have audio, make sure you leave audio and video selected. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the format options. 
Now you're going to see right now that the compressor that's being used is animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be an Avid codec. So what I'm going to do is select the compression type here and I can come right down to Avid Meridian Compress. Now one thing I should also point out inside of here, inside of this window here, is you can also export H.264 files right from within Media Composer. And for all my Mac friends out there, you can actually export ProRes from this window as well. A very handy option to have only for my Mac friends out there. But like I said, I'm going to select Avid Meridian Compressed. What we're going to do is set the quality to be best. We're going to set millions of colors, not plus, because we don't have any alpha channels. I'm going to select the options here. Again, remember in the previous window I selected RGB, so we'll just stick with that. And we're going to use 2 to 1 interlaced in NTSC. I'm simply going to say OK. We're going to say OK again. Now the sound in this case, if I had any, we'll just come into the settings, would be set to 48. But you'll remember, like I said, I didn't have any sound, and we're not going to prepare for internet streaming. So I'm simply going to say OK. And now I'm going to do a Save As, and we're going to call this SD QuickTime. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say Save. And let's just call this, again, appropriately enough, Moto Crossing. Let's say Save. You'll see the export is not going to take that long. What's also important to keep in mind is that what Media Composer and Symphony is actually doing at the same time that it's exporting is that it's technically rendering this entire uh, timeline. In this case, it's pretty short. It's only about 15 seconds long. But if I had any unrendered effects in this timeline, it would actually render them as it exports. You don't need to render and then export. You can do it both at the same time. What I'm going to do is just minimize Symphony here. I'm going to come to that clip on my desktop and double click on it. Once QuickTime opens, you'll see that I now have my clip ready to go. And the cool thing is, is that if I come up here to my window and I say, show me the movie properties, it's actually not the movie properties, it's the movie inspector, you'll see that I've exported an Avid Meridian Compress 720 x 486 2398 standard F file at 720 by 486 so I hope this lesson has shown you how simple it actually is to get in and export standard F files from HD original content, and you don't need to get into third-party applications to produce a great-looking end product. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.